Okay, welcome back to the um, last uh, double session of the um, Central Coast Science UFO Symposium. And uh, this will be a presentation between uh, two people that uh, have a relationship in a field, but not a relationship in a scientific way. The science side of uh, this presentation is going to be by physicist Gary Wade. Uh, Gary is a physicist by training. He has a Master of Science degree in physics, Master Thesis in Plasma Physics. He worked for seven years in the Advanced Manufacturing Technology section of Hughes Aircraft Company. He was the scientific advisor to the National Health Federation and Science Editor for Health Freedom News. Currently, he's doing research and is the research director of the American Institute of Rehabilitation, where he's continually working on developing various energy-based alternative health treatment technologies. He is the inventor of Rife Tech and is continually developing the Rife-based technology. He has and uh, he has seen and interacted with UFOs all of his life since his early childhood. For many years, he has worked on the physics uh, behind uh, what is observed in UFO flight actions and observed UFO behavior. Uh, he was uh, editor and writer of the publication, The UFO Report. And Hello? Yes, good. Okay, I'm going to be fast here, otherwise we'll get nothing done. Um, I saw UFO first time when I was four and a half years old, and then over the years I kept seeing them. Until about 1967, the summer thereof, in August mainly, I had several close encounters with several different flying saucers and... Uh, ellipsoidals and whatnot, and um, I decided I needed to figure out how these things worked. And I took it on as sort of like a physics hobby, that was my major in, in college. And let me see if I get this thing right. Uh, definitions and assumptions here to use. UFO, any physical object, aircraft, manned or controlled by beings from uh, uh, other star systems. The Earth is being visited by dozens of extraterrestrial <coughs> extraterrestrial civilizations on a regular basis. The range of spiritual and technological development of these visitors varies from a few thousand years to a few billion years ahead of us. Uh, UFO propulsion systems. These have effects and consequences we can see and experience. Some uh, seem to use high intensity static and oscillating magnetic fields. Others also use high frequency electric fields and or microwave fields. This here is an object traveling through the sky, and there's an observer down there looking at it, and it extends an angle alpha in the vision of the observer. And because of how our eyes work, if an object moves over about 16 angular dimensions per second, it goes into the invisible range as far as we're concerned, unless it's a really, really bright object. Otherwise, it's invisible. So these guys can fly over all the time at high velocity, so they're doing more than 16 angular uh, dimensions of themselves per second, and we'll never know about it. And they also have technology that doesn't cause shockwave generation. Um, visible plasma cloud, caused by intense microwave pulses, caused by high frequency and high intensity oscillating electric fields, or both. These are common things that the shuttle craft and whatever you want to call these different crafts that are coming from starships or coming by themselves, they use all kinds of combinations of these things depending on their level of development and their technology and material science of that particular civilization. Uh, this is what was seen by an Air Force counter and electronic intelligence warfare plane in the late 60s. It came across this round, orange glowing sphere going through the sky and they tracked it and followed it all around. This thing was very nice to them and stayed down to about three, 400 miles an hour so it could, so it could keep up with them. And this is what they were picking up. The horizontal uh, line represents the time axis, and the vertical bars represent power pulses of, of microwave radiation. I've expanded one of them here to give you an idea. And they put out this tremendous power pulse for just two millionths of a second. And then they wait a while, and they put another one out. And they were putting out 600 of these power pulses per second, 
and the instantaneous power level of these microwave pulses was around 2 billion watts. So it was a real bright little burst of energy and they would decide to put it out, they put it out. Now the reason I think they do this is to generate plasma clouds around the, the ship and then they manipulate the plasma clouds with a magnetic and electric fields and I'm going to talk to you about how they do that. This down in the bottom uh, right hand corner is a cartoon of a plasma. Positive and negative particles mixed with some neutral particles and that's called a plasma, a gaseous plasma. Well, you can have a gaseous plasma created by a microwave burst. If you have microwave ports or electrodes it's configuration on the surface of your ship and you put a big microwave power burst into it, it causes plasma and then the plasma explodes out as a cloud all around the ship, maybe 30, 40, 50, 100 feet depending how much power, how big a ship. Another way to say it is, is if you put enough power into anything it will glow and that's what they've got. They've got the power to do what they want. So once you generate this explosive plasma cloud around the ship, what might you want to do with it? Well, here's a nice interesting drawing. You notice all the little circles with the X's in them and how they're all kind of like uniform there? That's a representation of the idea that's a magnetic field heading into the screen. See all of the vertical uh, arrow lines? That's, that represents the idea that there's an electric field going at right angles to that magnetic field. And you see those half arcing connecting circles? And there's a, there's a mirror image of it down there? Well, one represents the path that a negative particle the one on top is a path that, oh, he had to keep hitting that button. This is a bad design. Uh, this path here is the path a negative particle will travel, and this mirror image is the path that a positive particle will travel when it finds itself in this crossed uh, magnetic electric field, which I'm showing on the board here. Now, a plasma cloud is a tremendous mixture of billions and billions and trillions of, of these ions, but they all act the same way. So just as you see both the positive and negative particles here, both go the same direction in this field. If you put a plasma cloud there, that's the direction the plasma cloud will go. And furthermore, if you expand this, this scale and imagine that my uniform magnetic field is no longer quite uniform, it kind of gets stronger on one side than the other, and my electric does also. Well, the cloud will still head that way, but you can also now compress the cloud, the cr uh, cloud. Or, if you do it the other way, you can make the cloud move that way, but now expand. Well, what I'm suggesting to you here is that these UFO folks know how to do all of that. Now, here's my cartoon of a UFO there, and I've showed these two looking circular things. That's a cross-sectional cut of a proposed current-carrying ring that's in the hull of the ship. And it, the, the lines there represent the magnetic field. Now, if the ship is moving along with a magnetic field provided by this current carrying ring, another phenomena happens. That at right angles to the magnetic field, by that little funny equation up there, E equals V cross B, an electric field is experienced or formed by a moving magnetic field, and it just so happens it's a crossed EB field like I just showed you. And if a plasma is put in that, you know, if you make that plasma cloud around the UFO by a microwave burst, well, what will happen is, is that I've shown on the screen here, these little circles with those arrows in them. The circle is, a, that, again, that magnetic field. And the little arrow now represents the electric field that is generated by the motion of the magnetic field. And you'll notice that they're at right angles to each other. If you get the physics book out and actually work the equations, this moving ring, I've gotten rid of the, the hull of the UFO, I'm just talking about the ring itself now. If that ring is moving along through a plasma cloud, it interacts it in such a way as it moves the, the cloud towards the ship and compresses it. Yeah, it's really kind of neat. Yeah, so it's built into that geometry of a current carrying ring that if you sling it through the atmosphere, and let's say it's a superconducting ring, and it runs into the plasma, it'll pull the plasma right on by itself.